so good evening. This, this is Ali, Ali as the Dean from Fourth Generation for Education. And today we are excited to be with you. As you know, during the week, we are here on Monday, we are here on Wednesday, we are here on Friday for English session, French session and Arabic session. And uh, Anisha and Sandeep, they are today based in India. And we have 68% of our attendees are based in India. We have people in North America. As I can see, some people are from USA. Hello, Tiffany, and hello, everyone in the US. I can see that we have people from South America. And if I'm not mistaken, we have people from Colombia. Right, Isabel? We have people in Europe. We have people in the Middle East. We have people in Africa. And I can see the countries, Qatar, India, Lebanon, uh, Kazakhstan, Jordan, uh, and many, many, many other countries. Christine, hello from Switzerland. 78% uh, are teachers, 10% are coordinators, and then 66% are still teaching online. So this uh, session is really for you. 7% they are back to the face-to-face -face, and then 27% they are doing the two uh, mode face-to-face -face and online. I would like to welcome everyone, remind you again, uh, Razia and everyone in the chat, click to all panelists and attendees. On Facebook, I'm going to check your messages as well. And let me introduce Anisha and Sandeep. Welcome. I'm so excited to collaborate with you this afternoon. Ideas to promote inquiry online. Let's start the session and enjoy this one hour together. Thank you, Ali. Thank you, Ali. All right. Yeah. Hello and namaste to all the attendees and Ali and Sandeep. So I'm going to begin with my introduction. I am Anisha Sani. I'm from India, born and brought up in Delhi, uh, which is the capital city of India. I've been into the education industry for over 15 years. And I would say um, being in the teaching industry, I'm still learning. It's been 15 years and I'm still learning. Um, I've been with the IBPYP for over 10 years now. Um, Currently, I'm working with the Prometheus School, which is an IB candidate school in Noida, and I am the primary school principal there. I'm also a Jolly Phonics trainer with Jolly Learning UK. And uh, something personal about me, I have a beautiful daughter who's three and a half, and I love to travel. Um, oh, so we, we, we both have daughters, and mine is four and a half, Anisha. <laughs> All right, we must connect someday then for them. Yeah, as well. they should have a Zoom meeting because these days, even the little ones, they are enjoying those Zoom meetings. Yeah, right. Um, this is Miss Sandeep Kaur, and I will let her introduce herself. Thank you. Hi, everybody, and thank you, Anisha and Ali. I think this is a great platform to collaborate with other educators across the world. And I've been into PYP for the past eight years, and I'm currently working as a PYP coordinator with Heritage School, uh, International School in Gurgaon. And I have teenage children. My daughter's in college, and my son is in grade 11. So I'm looking forward to Are they forward learning to online or face-to-face, -face, Sandeep? Uh, they're online, Ali. They're working online. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so to get going, we are, uh, let's focus on the agenda for the day today, the guiding questions for the session today, we'll be looking at what is the inquiry process, how does inquiry feel like, sound like, and look like online, how can we collaborate online, and how can we assess online, and to begin with, we would request you all to share one word to describe the inquiry process. So let's just pause and reflect and use the chat feature to interact. What's that one word that comes to your mind when you say, uh, when you look at the word inquiry process? Okay, Priya is saying ongoing, uh, Karen is saying engaging, and Priya, let me remind you, please click all panelists and attendees. Hiba is mentioning wonder, Natalia is saying curiosity, and uh, Jennifer is mentioning lifelong learner, Hiba, hello Hiba, independent, interactive, uh, discovering, exploring, uh, what else do we have in the chat, relevant and challenging, 
Uh, so a lot of ideas are coming. I'm just picking the new words, uh, investigating. Um, again, some similar words are coming again, uh, being engaging. And the people on Facebook, yes. Yeah, so they started also interacting. Uh, Niha is saying learning by doing when we are talking about inquiry. Uh, Madhu is saying questioning. Joel, a very interesting word, reflection. And uh, we have the word action coming as well. Uh, brainstorming from Majida, research from uh, Mega or Meha. It's not easy to spell some of the names, but I'm enjoying uh, seeing all these differences of the name and all these kind of feedback coming uh, in the in that chat. So let me check if you have the same word, Anisha and Sandeep, on your on your slide, and let's check if our attendees they were thinking in the same way. Right. Thanks, Ali. Thanks for reading out all the responses. Well, um, the numerous responses just show one thing that inquiry has a lot more to it. And that is why it makes it look like a process. It is a whole process. And today together, we are going to explore uh, the different ideas uh, to promote inquiry online. Moving ahead, uh, Sandeep is going to talk to us about the inquiry process. Yeah, so I do see some common words. I think most of them like wondering, question, figuring out, building connect connections, developing different skills and exploring resources, recording a new understanding and application, right? The action which uh, somebody spoke about. Now, when I look at myself as a learner, I see myself going through all that process. You know, when I wanted to inquire about something, I would have some wonderings in my head and some questions. And I would find out, uh, you know, figure out a plan of finding out things. And during that process would help me to develop different skills such as, uh, you know, communication or collaborative skills or de developing social skills and research. And once when I was figuring out things, right, you, you tend to sort out information. You start putting it down on paper or, uh, you know, recording it somewhere and then sorting it out, which is more valuable, which is close to you, which works, you know, aligns with your question, what you're trying to figure out. And then once the new understanding is in place, right? Everybody loves to share. There is action that is going to happen and you want to go back and share it with your uh, colleagues or people around you and apply it to real life. That is what the inquiry process looks like at my level, you know, as a learner when I reflect. And, so, uh, yeah. Do, do, you, do you think that this inquiry process should be visible to the student and shared with the learners? Yes, Ali, yes, it needs to be shared with the learners and it needs to be visible. So that's what I was coming up to. So when I look at my learners in the class, I see them going through a similar kind of a process, right? So I see them having their wonderings, you know, and uh, they, there's something that they're curious about, their curiosity, and they want to figure out things. And uh, when we take them through the whole journey of uh, this process, it helps them to build connections and uh, becoming, you know, life, it leads to lifelong learning, which we just shared as a group right now. So uh, moving forward with this, right? While I was, uh, we were trying to get uh, our uh, presentation ready. So Anisha would probably share the next slide where I came across a beautiful slide, a beautiful quote, which spoke, uh, which is from Eric Hoffman an American philosopher. And I found that it was, it was so apt in the COVID-19 pandemic because many of us have been, you know, practicing and molding ourselves according to the need of our learners. And uh, it, uh, so the quote talks about that the learners who inherit the earth while they learn find themselves beautifully equipped to deal with the world that they no, no longer exist. So if you see, we've been trying to adapt to the new situation and to be a learner, one needs to constantly engage in the inquiry process. And people who think that they are done and they've learned it all, it, they find it very challenging. So I thought that this, this, this was just apt and uh, you know we should get it here and share it with you all. So this is what the whole process is all about to be a lifelong learner. So going forward, I would want to know that how does inquiry look like 
feel like and sounds like in your classroom. As we've already shared that we are not experts, we've come here to collaborate with you and learn from you. So would love to know what does it look like, feels like and sounds like in your classroom, in your virtual classrooms. Um, yeah. It's so interesting to see how you are building on the prior knowledge of the participant about inquiry and our previous knowledge about inquiry and now how we are making the transfer and making some connection to the online learning. And let's check from our attendees. Is the inquiry online different from the inquiry face-to-face? -face? We are waiting to see your reflection in the chat. How does it look like? How does it feel like? And how does it sound like? Uh, so I'm having the word exciting from Jennifer, and I would like you to elaborate more in your chat uh, once you are sharing your ideas regarding the inquiry online. What are the challenges maybe that you face uh, where there are the opportunities and uh, Krishna is saying it's more independent, um, uh, it's more uh, student focused, uh, we are using more digital tools, uh, the provocation or the curiosity is still the same online and face to face. Um, we are still seeing a lot of creativity. So many people are mentioning the concept of uh, creativity. I have one, uh, we, 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 we hear all the discussion even online. Uh, it's more personal. Uh, we have more student vo voice online. Uh, it's noisy with the student agency and the choice and opportunities. Uh, I'm seeing again the word the creativity and from Facebook, let me check. So yes, it's different. Uh, it looks like more a research. It feels like they are more involved. Uh, it's a challenging uh, from Jennifer because we have those new uh, kind of rules and regulation. We are relaying more on parents and the role of the parents. A lot of interesting ideas. Uh, okay, so uh, Sharmila is saying that online, it sounds like a chaos sometimes. Most of the time, some question and exclamation mark. Uh, and I would say it's more silent maybe online. Look what is happening now. We are inquiring, but we are only reading your answers, no? Uh, yeah. So uh, it's very silent. So Hiba, yes. But Hiba, remember to put all panelists and attendees if you want everyone to read your answers. And then I have a very nice one. Uh, it sounds like an orchestra. Uh, Joyti is a regular attendee. She's saying 80% is guided at the beginning and then 20% independent, but then towards the end we swatch and then it will become 20% guided and then 80% independent. This is very interesting, those connections to the open inquiry, guided inquiry or a structured inquiry. So these are some of the ideas. And again, people on Facebook are interacting as well. We are having from Facebook some ideas like more creativity online. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm so glad that none of the educators have written something for feel like which is difficult, impossible, because when, it, when there was a switch from the physical space to the uh, virtual world, most of us were stuck that how is inquiry going to be virtual? But I think many of us have sailed together, have figured out ways. So, so glad that none have written that difficult, impossible, not possible uh, under feel like. I must also share that this is the this visible thinking routine was first ex I first explored it in a PD session with Kath Madoc where she got us to do this and since then it has become one of my favorites and whenever we begin uh, something new to assess the prior knowledge um, you know even even as little as kindergarten students while exploring a unit on friendship we looked at what does friendship look like feel like and sound like. So feel like had words like, uh, you know, fights, friendship feels like fighting, friendship feels like hugging. So uh, I absolutely uh, love this tool. And totally agree with you, Anisha, on this. It also helps the learners to think deeply, you know, because uh, it gets their critical thinking in place. They're thinking more than just saying that this is what it looks like, right? So this is what it is. So uh, when, uh, um, you know, I've been doing, uh, having this process in place in my virtual classroom, I try and listen to my students' conversations because I want them to feel that I'm interested in it. So 
probably you know digging deeper into their conversations and asking them you know these different questions that tell me more about that what do you think and how can you share uh, differently or how can you inquire about this so asking these questions uh, to my students make them feel valued and also i that brings in a lot of student agency it's like honoring students voice and choice in the classroom and i actively involve myself in this whole learning process and along with that i also model a lot of curiosity through these questions you know and love for my learning you know i wonder why you're doing this tell me more about it how can we build it further and this data also gives me uh, an insight into my students interest and abilities and that helps me to plan meaningful engagements around their learning like you said that you know if the learner is motivated and encouraged you're right he's going to take it independently initially it is guided yes it is but gradually once you get to know what they're interested in what they're curious to know about you can plan experiences around them so that gradually you you know start letting them go off so this is what i uh, you know begin or start my inquiry process with by engaging into their valuable uh, questions and finding out and listening more about their stories so uh, once i've got this in place and as you've all shared that it it's to do with many tools virtual tools having them in place the next slide that anisha would show you is about how i'm uh, using different tools virtual tools to collaborate with my students so i use a lot of padlet in the class jamboard you know a uh, zoom chat uh, feature where my students share uh, what they want to learn how they want to learn and uh, give me again information about what they're curious to know more about so the first padlet that the green one talks about what they were because that this i this reflection i took at the end of the year what they want to do in grade 2 that also gave me an idea of how should i plan my units you know unit unit of inquiry in the next coming year and what were they all wondering about and uh, while i was doing that i found out they were really interested in dinosaurs and planets and that gave me an idea and to sit with my teachers and collaborate and plan the whole program of inquiry since i'm working in a pyp school we have to design the curriculum so that's what i used to plan the learning for the new year going ahead with this uh, uh, after you know we've collaborated with students on different virtual tools anisha if you could share the next slide is i bring in lot of play you know because we all know that uh, you know students love playing and it promotes student choice voice and agency so um, getting in uh, organizing lot of play dates for my students and uh, bringing in lot of loose parts helps them to pro become problem solvers and develop again develop lot of creativity and imagination and we use lot of art to share their learning with their friends in class so creating these opportunities helps them to become independent you know they are exploring like i shared with you that they wanted to learn about dinosaurs so i provided those space i i'm sure if i we would have been in a face to face classroom we would have created much more but how do we what kind of spaces do we create what kind of learning environment do we create so creating play dates organizing them i saw that my children were curious and they were creating picking up loose parts to create things that they wanted to share with their friends and they were trying to figure out things so if you see they they were trying to create you know dinosaur feet and uh, using you know vegetables to create dinosaurs a lot of art was there that i saw during the play dates so that is another way to promote uh, support uh, independent learning then once we had the play and we encouraged uh, them to be independent learner having conversations with them we also tried to get their research skills in place so inviting an expert who uh, helped me to you know get uh, learning in in a real life context so we had susan pal who came in and uh, power who came in and uh, she shared we were doing a unit on uh, uh, role models and she shared with the students you know how does she motivate uh, teachers to become uh, follow her footstep and so getting again getting 
experts into it in a virtual scenario helps uh, students to build real life connections. And then reading out books is a great way of bringing in contextual learning. And uh, while you're reading, you can also you know, cover your standards and literacy skills that you can cater to. Um, and also, you know, like children love researching. Now we are all virtual and they're using different tools. We also equip students with different child friendly, uh, you know, research engines such as Kiddle and Kidrax. Kidrex. So this was again an opportunity to develop different skills in terms of, you know, recording, observing, whatever, having meaningful questions that they, they want to ask an expert, skimming through information while we were reading through books. So this kind of an environment I created with my students online so that I could support them in their inquiry process and, uh, you know, help them again uh, lead the uh, learning in their own way. Going ahead with this, uh, I know if it would have been a face-to-face -face scenario, we would have probably taken them to a field trip to just build on to the inquiry. But taking them through uh, a virtual trip also supported the inquiry process, you know. So since the children were curious to know about dinosaur, we used, uh, we took them to this national uh, museum again. And uh, this uh, gave the opportunity to students to look at things from different views. Had it been a face-to-face, -face, it would have been challenging because you know you have to take everybody together. You have to be mindful. They're not running here and there. But being uh, in a virtual class, we could zoom out and read uh, uh, things and work on our own pace, refer to whatever the children were finding out at their own pace rather than rushing through it. Because when you do have a face-to-face, -face, you would probably get back to school on one time. And uh, you know there are some limitations, but uh, being virtually, I think this was a great opportunity to take them through a virtual trip. The second picture, again, uh, we were doing, a, we were learning about you know, uh, community helpers. So uh, again, building a real life context, taking them to a virtual tour where they saw that how people work to create things for them, for the community, you know, again, gave students the idea. So again, like I said, it is not just limited, the inquiry is just not limited to a face-to-face -face classroom. I, I agree that it is chaotic, but uh, when we are virtual, we can, like we are creative, we are still exploring. And as teachers also, we are inquirers. You figure out ways to support your learners if you have the intent to do it. So let's see what next. Now, once the research was in place, now our children wanted to, share their learning right developing a community of learner was so important everybody excited to share what they've picked up what they've learned so again creating a platform to for sharing their learning so show and tell in my classroom having master classes and you know assemblies would again provide uh, opportunities for the learners to share their learning uh, with the whole community and also provide feedback to each other you know what uh, kind of a feedback what works well what, what they could improve on so these were a few things that we i i and anisha have been working in our school and in our classrooms and uh, and we would be happy to know more from you so uh, let's see that how can we collaborate now right so the next thing that we could talk about is that how can we collaborate online and uh, we would like to read your responses in the chat box Good. So with those uh, inspiring ideas with the Padlet and the Wonder Wall, with the virtual field trip and the guest speaker, our attendees started mentioning ideas about collaboration online. They are talking about the assemblies, about school group discussion, breakout rooms, uh, uh, flip grid, uh, using uh, uh, channels on Microsoft Teams. Uh, breakout room is coming again about the collaboration, giving the student chance to share their ideas. And then I'm um, checking also and having a look on Facebook if someone is putting a, a post or a comment. Um, um, student, they can ch ch chat and do peer observation. And uh, the participants are also sharing plenty of uh, uh, applications online that provoke or promote collaboration. Uh, and uh, discussion. 
and I'm getting plenty of questions. So I want to remind everyone that uh, the questions in the Q&A, uh, they will be answered during the session or at the end of the session. And uh, a final reminder, or again, um, one more reminder in that chat, click all panelists and attendees. You are sharing great ideas. So if you want everyone to read your ideas, make sure you are sending them to the attendees and not only panelists. Good, so let's see how you collaborated online, uh, Anisha and Sandeep, and what are the ideas that you would like to share with us? So thank you for sharing uh, the different ideas as to how every, uh, you know, you people are collaborating in your own worlds, collaborating online with students, other people, the other community. And before I talk about how can we call it, how, uh, before I share ideas how to collaborate online or how we've collaborated online, I just like to leave this little quote here, which says, uh, no significant learning can occur without a significant relationship. And isn't that very, very important? Unless you have a relationship, unless you connect, unless you do all of this, there is no meaningful learning that occurs. Um, moving on, um, these are certain examples that I'd like to talk about that how, how can we collaborate uh, online and how, why is collaboration also very important? Uh, collaborating with different people outside the classroom helps students to build connections in real con a life context. And that makes meaning uh, learning even more meaningful. Um, now, the pictures that you see here is the first one where you see all the doctors and nurses. Um, we were talking about the World Humanitarian Day. Um, so children are very excited with things like Christmas or, uh, you know, the different festivals that ha um, happen in different countries. Now, these little things have their own significance. Inquiring deep into it, uh, the origin of such days. Why is it that we celebrate? How is it that we mark such events? How is it marked? Is it a worldwide uh, uh, celebration? How is it that people do it in different parts of the world? So after we spoke about all of these things, the students decided to say a thank you to the doctors and the nurses. And that emerged from their real life uh, scenario, which is being in the COVID world. All that you hear about these days is hospitals. All that you hear about is patients. All that we were hearing about is, we keep hearing about is the, how nurses and doctors are dealing with it. With this, the, the, it aroused curiosity about this being such an infectious, contagious infection, how are the doctors and nurses dealing with it? So um, within the World Humanitarian Day, there was another mini inquiry about how are the, what are the systems that are the hospitals are following? What, how are they dealing with the scenario? How, what, are the, what are the measures they are taking? So there were numerous questions. And uh, not that I had answers to all of them, not that I had to just Google and give it to them. So we connected with uh, the hospitals at, um, the doctors at a hospital nearby. And they were our guest speakers to take this inquiry further, to take the learning further. Students had an opportunity to connect with all of them. They had an opportunity to ask questions. Now, what happens with guest speaker sessions is the beauty of collaboration is that you expand your learning. The responses that you hear, there are questions based on those responses. So before you plan such sessions, students also work out what is it that they want to know? What are the questions they are going to ask? the responses that they get lead to further question and that leads to further finding out. So students really did ask that, uh, you know, it is contagious. You tell us to keep sit at home. What are you doing there? How are you stepping out? Why are you telling me to be home and wear a mask and uh, not meet people? And whereas you are dealing with patients, you write on the forefront, they got their answers and that led to a meaningful learning that they are taking safety measures. If they are not going to be there, what is going to happen? Uh, another picture that you see here is the award-winning author, which is um, Rhonda Gowler Green. And this guest speaker was, um, you know, she was invited for a unit on imagination. And um, students have their own questions that, how do, you, how do you imagine? What do you imagine? How do you write stories? Okay, when you have your imagination in place, because stories are what? They're all about your imaginative world, right? So um, they decided to speak to this author. They chose the author. And when she came in, of course, she read out a book, which was her favorite read aloud. Post that, the students had questions. How did you think about this idea? What made you write this story? Um, and how do you put your imagination into words? And do you change your imagination? So all the questions 
emerge out of the provocations we had on the unit. And uh, the, this, this uh, a session, almost like an interview with the author, led to further learning. Um, now, a collaboration is not always about just inviting someone or interviewing someone. Collaboration is also what we are doing right now. Collaboration is also, even if when children step out of the classroom, meet other children, try and find out things, that's also collaboration. So uh, collaboration with the parent community is also very important. And um, so what are parents? What are the other guest speakers? All these, all these people who we go and speak to, I look at them as authentic audience. I look at them as, um, you know, people who can, who they can interact with, find out and connect their learning with real life experiences. And um, so the parent community collaboration was all about, stu uh, uh, all about uh, students sharing their learning about a particular unit through a student um, led conference uh, model. And uh, not that we only wait for an S SLC. In between, if the students want to present their learning, who do you want to present to? Do you want to share it with the parents? Do you want to share it with the, with the other parents? And uh, that also gives an opportunity for them to develop their communication skills, be effective communicators. Um, authentic audience motivates them to put their best foot forward. Um, the other picture that you see here is collaboration with the school. We were in Noida. We collaborated with the school in Egypt. This was during our unit on celebrations. So um, the celebration in, um, that we were discussing in common was Eid, which is celebrated in many parts of the world in different ways. Um, so how is it that it was celebrated in Egypt? What is it that we are doing here sitting in India? What is the common, what are the co uh, common things in between? Is there anything which is happening different? Bringing in the Venn diagram post their session as a reflection. And, um, you know, children were very excited to show the different savers that they have, the, the different suites that they were prepared. They were all dressed up. Uh, the multicultural aspect about how, um, how is that celebration linked to the different cultural and um, to their culture and developing that understanding of different cultures. So there is a beauty in collaborating. Uh, I, you can just book, pick up a book or you can just Google how is it celebrated here. But the, the, the advantage of collaboration is that they get to see that this really exists. And this is what we say real life connections, right? And that learning stays with you for long. Now, we've spoken about collaboration and let's move on to assessments because they also play an important role online, right? When we talk about the, uh, the inquiry process, collaboration, Sandeep took us through the inquiry process. Uh, she spoke about what are the different elements that you bring in, um, you know, uh, like play that she elaborated on, the different tech tools that you bring in. You collaborate with different people and the need to do so we've looked at. Now let's look at assessments. Now, when we come to assessments, uh, let's just reflect on and share and collaborate to know that how can we assess online. We will use the chat feature and of course Ali is going to read it out and uh, share all the responses with yes, all of Yes, and <laughs> while you started uh, directly with the question, the answers started coming, but I would like to comment on this whole idea how the session is planned. And if our participant noticed that we started with your prior knowledge, we shared our new ideas and perspectives through collaboration and uh, that chat, and now we are trying to wrap it up assessment uh, uh, element and component which is also very important and um, while you are also still sending your your ideas in the chat i want to let anisha and sandeep know that one of the questions that we are getting and we got it like three different times from three different attendees we can address it at the end but you can start thinking about it differentiation sure. online and we know that Inquiry leads to differentiate. So how you are differentiating, I will come to this question later. And let me start sharing the assessment ideas online. Rina is mentioning the idea of the videos, the use of the visible thinking routine. Uh, we have a CISO using forms, uh, using Padlet, uh, verbal sharing, written sharing, reflection, ongoing reflection, and uh, what I still, I'm still having. Choice uh, board. Giving the student choice board. Uh, so uh, Niha is answering the question uh, about <laughs> differentiation. She said also giving choice board. Uh, 
Facebook. So yeah. we will discuss this in more details later on. Uh, the celebration of learnings, they can still happen online and then using application like Kahoot quizzes or other application to do those assessments online. So these are some of the ideas of our attendee from Facebook and from Zoom. Let's have a look at what you have done at your school, Sandeep and Anisha, and see some of the ideas that you implemented and they were successful. Yeah. Thanks, Ali, and thanks to all the attendees. The list was long. Yes, we've all been doing and exploring um, all of these that you've listed in the chat here. And um, the first question when we look at assessing online is why are we even actually assessing? So we all know, I'm not going to get into this detail of what is assessments, why do we assess? We all know that the assessment is important to monitor how are the students developing the different skills and the concepts. How do we do that? Now, when we shifted to this online teaching, and now that we're talking about um, online assessments, uh, I think most of us as educators are very jittery about the authenticity of the assessments. How do we ensure that these online assessments are authentic? Um, you know, when children are in front of us, you're always on the look, listen, and note mode that is always on, um, you know, your ongoing assessments. Also, IDs moved away from summatives and the focus is more on um, the formative assessments. How is it that we bring those online assessments uh, in um, and, uh, you know, we ensure that they're authentic, we ensure that they're meaningful and age appropriate. Um, now, most of the ideas were already listed in the chat box when we post that question to uh, the very smart audience that we have today and the very experienced audience that we have today. I'm going to share some of these uh, three, four examples. I couldn't bring all, I wish I had, I had the, all the time in the world to keep uh, talking about and sharing ideas, but we just selected very few. Now, the first one that you see here is a visible thinking routine, which was used. And so what do the physical thinking routines do? They help in, um, you know, building perspective. It, it, it shows the understanding of uh, the student through these uh, visible thinking routines. The first one that you see here is the color symbol and the picture uh, BTR, which was used for healthy relationships. So what is, so if just an example here, a child shows a green and that's his love for nature and that's his relationship with the nature. The red has been chosen for relationship with healthy relationship with the human beings and the heart as a symbol to represent love. The black that you see here is not a good one. It's sad, it's a broken heart. And uh, so they, through this, we see how are they building their connections? How are they, it's also, um, you know, a great reflection of their reasoning skills and they talk about it. Isn't that very clear through all of these? Um, another one that you see here was a focus on subject specific skills, you know? So you would have, you, we all heard Sandeep talk about dinosaurs and how that emerged and through the Padlet where children wanted to learn more about it. And then through play when she brought in all the dinosaur play. So, um, because the students were interested in, they wanted to learn more about it. Now, how do I bring that into my language? And how is it that I can encourage and look at the writing skills? Dinosaurs, there it was, the got the interest of my learners and whatever they were learning about. So we told them to write about dinosaurs. What is it that you know? What is it that one fun fact you'd like to share? One new thing that you've learned? What is it that you would want to write about and the others would like to read about dinosaurs? And through this engagement, the assessment, the teacher, was focusing on their skill of, uh, you know, uh, using appropriate words in a sentence, uh, the spellings, letter formations, the sentence structure. Most of the students even use the paragraph writing. So uh, you break it at a certain point for a paragraph. And through this writing piece, those subject specific skills uh, were also assessed. Uh, some more examples here, there, there are many tools and I'm sure most of us have listed it down there. Now, uh, what you see here on the slide is the online quiz and the flipgrid. Now, quizzes are a great tool to use to, um, you know, to evaluate their understanding, a quick tool to kind of evaluate their understanding. It, it gives the think time to students when they look at the different responses uh, listed there. And uh, we, we've been using a lot of quizzes in our, um, in our classes and students enjoy it because for them, it's like a game. I need to score. 
and for teachers it's like a great assessment tool to see that all right so and so and it also shows the wrong answers when you see that instead of saying oopsie you got that wrong and you talk about hey ali do you think it's this and i see that you didn't get that right why do you think that you know dinosaurs are birds i'm just picking up an example from here and then you build on and you know that the hair is a child who needs help over here so feedback as a feed forward finding out things that the child needs help with and as uh, through these assessments picking those up and a uh, formulating of a plan for your different learners right um flipgrid was again one of the responses that ali shared and it was in our um uh, the the attendees listed it in the chat and i was so glad to hear that because i find it a very non threatening platform for students where they have their space and they have the liberty to pose uh, you know show their learning so over here what you see is the students use the flipgrid to show their understanding of the planets some had a whole model of the uh, solar system talking about all the different planets some just spoke about the one particular planet some they also had the choice to um, you know post a video or talk about it something that really happened very well through this was the the the, the peer assessment the students had the uh, had an opportunity to comment on each other's uh, work the student if i post uh, if i posted something over there i get to read what my peers have written i get to read i get to see what my teachers commented on and if there is something that i need to work on my teachers given me a little suggestion i have my time to work on it and i work on it and post it again for a teacher the assessment tool this assessment tool works very very well because uh, you're able to give timely feedback you're able to see your different learners you're able to uh, you know find out who needs help with what how can i help this how can i guide him further into his inquiry process and you list down points as feed forward with students uh, work on and uh, <laughs> all these show uh, you know help us monitor evaluate the different skills and the concepts that we've been working on in our inquiry process um so those were the suggestions that uh, i mean uh, the examples that we had to share and uh, before we end the session i think it's always a time to reflect and we still have time for um, we were very mindful of time so that we have time for question and answers because you do get to learn a lot from questions that people have right so uh, we would be using the chat box again for two stars and wish two stars are for things that you something was new something that you liked something that you went well in the session and one wish maybe this is what i was looking at i wish i could know more about so and so so um we look forward to look to your responses in the chat box and i have ali to be reading it out aloud <laughs> perfect timing so we've been through the presentation for 45 minutes now it's time to wrap it up to do some uh, reflection while the participants are writing uh, the reflection and the two stars or one star or maybe one wish i would like to go back to our question about differentiation and let's hear from you anisha and sandeep i'm not sure who would like to start uh, how did you differentiate online and then let me remind all the attendees you can still send q and a's in the session related to q and a's Uh, Sandeep, would you like to start? How did you differentiate with your teacher, with your student at your yes. school? Uh, so let's uh, hear from you. Yeah. So Ali, as I, uh, if you would have remembered, I began with you know uh, listening to my students' stories. That right. gave me an idea of what my students were interested in, what what they wanted to learn, or their interests and abilities. So once the teacher has that data, she plans the learning engagements accordingly. Play while they're playing in small groups. That gives you a huge amount of data again. You know when you're observing and you're making notes and you're noticing what your students are doing and what they're curious about helps you to plan learning experiences which are right, bang on for your students. and as you're all aware you know it's difficult to take the whole group of students together in a class so having small group sessions you know grouping them up according to their interest and uh, 
also one on one sessions you can provide experiences accordingly i know it's quite challenging and it's quite a bit of a task for a teacher but uh, that's what we are all achieving to you know we want our students to be independent learners and how do we do it it's just by catering to their personal needs that's okay. what we need to support yeah and so that's what, what i've been about, uh, what about you and your school how you dealt with the differentiation online so ali i have uh, been seeing my teachers use a, um, using the breakout rooms a lot for this because uh, uh, when we say a general term for inquiry process one size doesn't fit all children have different uh, they, they're different uh, learners they have their different questions their different findings they want to build on talk more so i think during the session i see my teachers using a lot of breakout rooms and um so we are one teacher and a co teacher we decide in advance that who's getting to with with which group also the student connect time through the online what we uh, also established a practice post our lesson timings is a student connect time we uh, you know create a rota where it's me and my student and that is the time that we really use for our differentiation okay uh, the people also mentioned on facebook and in the chat the whole idea of choice board so giving the student choices this allows for more agency and then that choice will be based on the interest on the product or on the learning style i'm reading plenty of your the reflections here and uh, people are very happy with the examples that you shared it was very organized very clear uh, they are giving ideas or starts to the virtual tour the use of the part and then uh, i have one more question but let's go to the following slide i would like to highlight uh, your work anisha and sandeep and then tell the participants about our upcoming event and then i go to the final question great okay so um this is where we say let's join us and let's collaborate even further and the connect shouldn't stop here ali has given us an opportunity to connect even further and uh, sandeep and i together uh, collaborate to learn through teachers train teachers and it is a platform where uh, you know uh, we conduct trainings we have speakers we share resources we'll be happy to share your content your resources on our page so very quickly i'm going to share that we're on facebook linkedin even twitter with teachers train teachers you can reach out to us on this email id which is teachers train teachers1 at gmail.com and um twitter linkedin facebook we're very active and we respond very well uh good yeah. and this is our slide of for generation for education so uh, anisha if you don't mind stopping sharing the screen i'm going to share mine here and then i'm going to share also a few more question we still have time for question this is our youtube channel i share the link via the chat where you are going to find uh, very soon or in the next 24 hours that session and all our previous session and previous webinar uh, it's in arabic in english and in french with great speakers from all around the world so you can explore all these and you can use them for your professional development with your teachers as i said next week we have uh, a week full of ideas about approaches to learning or the 21st century skill so next monday same time on zoom uh, and live via our facebook page you can find uh, helen and malcolm they will be talking about the 21st century skills the session will have the same topic but in french on wednesday and then we will finish the week in arabic with the same concept so feel free to spread the word uh, to check uh, all our events on our website explore all our speakers and all the topics that we have for you and uh, uh, check also our paid workshop so for some people who would like to join Uh, for a paid workshop we have a session full day with Tanya Latanzo agency and inquiry you can join us and you can uh, explore uh, on a deeper level uh, these ideas and uh, connect with with everyone and now um, uh, for the questions that i have i would like to ask you uh how can we connect with other schools for chat or conference in chat we have plenty of facebook groups and you can join this facebook group and then you can connect with these schools feel free to send in that chat where you are located and then if people who are attending today they would like to connect with you about a topic that you would like you can also do you can also do this and i'm sure anisha and some people they might be interested in connecting with you right Yes. Oh, yes, definitely. 
Uh, my following question, it was about assessment and how we can make sure that the student, uh, we are assessing the student work and not the parents answer. So how did you work about that? Because I know many parents, they were maybe solving exercises and maybe doing the worksheet for their student. So how do you make sure uh, that uh, this is uh, not happening? Any idea about this? Uh, you want to go ahead, Anisha? We'll go on our land. Yeah. Uh, so what we've been doing in uh, classroom is like creating an environment which is, uh, um, you know, not threatening. So even if when students make uh, go wrong, it's fine to go wrong. And I have often been vulnerable in front of them that here, here is where I flipped and I couldn't do it well. And encouraging students to, you know, be honest about them and promoting academic honesty at uh, as early as grade one because all the examples that we shared with you was were from lower primary has been a great help and uh, so when we are designing co-creating the uh, you know success criteria of any work you know and now my students have started sharing you know i'm going to mention that i took help from my mommy or i did it independently so that exactly gives me an idea of where my students are and also some exit tickets are a nice way of uh, understanding where the students are, thumbs up, thumbs down. And these kind of quick assessments. And the I... videos, no? The videos. Yes. Because in a video, it's not the mom or the dad who are going to talk, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that has been there apart from the normal Okay. Things. I'm going yeah. to take the question of that. Anya and Dania, she asked, how did you collaborate with the school in Egypt? So how did you get in touch with them? It seems maybe Dania is also based in Egypt. Uh, so, Ali, uh, I must say thanks to my PVIP coordinator for that. And she was super active on these Facebook groups that you spoke about. There are many groups where teachers post that this is what we are learning about. Is there any school who wishes to collaborate? So we saw this on the PYP group on Facebook. And we, since we were into the same unit and uh, we responded quickly to them, we exchanged uh, email IDs and we took it on from there. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it up here. I have another session now. Uh, it's a workshop for some of the uh, people who uh, decided to join our workshop this afternoon. Uh, spread the word about our events. Uh, look at our YouTube channel. Uh, join us next week. Invite a friend. Uh, that's how we connect. That's how we learn. And that's how we show that we are like lifelong learners. Thank you again, Anisha. Thank you, Sandeep. It was great Thank collaborating you. with you. And then we had really a fun time planning for this event. Uh, tomorrow, you will get an email, a kind of an evaluation form, links to our social media. Uh, so uh, well, stay connected. Uh, thank you for all the people who watched us on Facebook and the people who were connected with us here. Have a nice afternoon and uh, see you soon. Thank you, Ali. Thank you, Ali. Great, yeah, great collaborating with you. Thanks, Satan.